I've been asked hundreds of times by people if I know how to build a working magnetic motor. That is the main focus of my channel after all. To answer that, not to sound too ambiguous, but I believe so. Allow me to elaborate on that. Some time ago, I posed the question to myself, what if you could remove all of the complex variables to building a magnetic motor? What if you could make it simple enough in design that anyone could understand it? My original idea when I began my journey along this path was to do just that. What if you could put aside things like angling magnetic spins, trying to use complex measurements of magnetic field strengths, material compositions of each magnet, sizing and placement? What if you could remove all the complexities and just make it a question of engineering? I gave the idea a lot of thought and came up with a concept I believe would work. I took away all the complexity and simplified it into something that I believe is easy to understand. I've refined the design over the years and made improvements. I've started to build it a handful of times and then set it aside, but I've never shared it. In fact, this is the first time I'm sharing the idea publicly. As I'm filming this video in late March of 2020 and the coronavirus has most non-essential businesses shut down, I'm unable to procure the necessary parts to construct this properly, so I'm simply sharing the information. Perhaps some of you out there have the tools to construct this now and the time to do so. Perhaps not. Regardless, I've been sitting on this information for years and have decided this might be a good time to share it. This is a simple model that I constructed using a 3D printer. This would actually need to be composed of metal shielding material, but I put this model together for the purpose of demonstrating the concept. In most of the designs people have circulated, their magnetic motors employ complex arrangements of magnets on the rotor and stator assemblies. This design only has two high-powered neodymium magnets in the stator assembly and steel bars on the rotor, which eliminates the cogging problems present in most design configurations I've seen. It's always an uphill battle trying to fight against the forces of the magnets rather than utilizing them in a more fluid fashion. For example, take a look at these magnetic switches. If you turn the switch, it cancels out the magnetic fields from the magnets inside. It shields them to be more accurate. If you turn the switch in the other direction, then you experience the full strength of the magnet therein. The larger one is called a Max Square 400. The reason being is that if you turn the knob, it has 400 pounds of magnetic pull force, though it requires far less than 400 pounds of pressure to turn the switch. In a way, it's like using a lever with a fulcrum. The closer you move the fulcrum to your load, the less effort it requires to lift the load from the other side. This is a very rudimentary example of my design that employs these principles. You need to use metal with high magnetic permeability on the rotors, but it also needs to be a material that does not retain its magnetic field when it's shielded from the field of the magnet. For this example, I simply used a glue gun to secure the metal bars on the rotor. They would actually need to be attached to your rotor securely with the amount of pull force that the stator would have, or they'd simply fly off, which could damage the magnets at any person's close by. So just do things with a caution if you attempt to build one of these, and use common sense. This device only requires two magnets, but I would suggest something of a stronger nature. N50 or higher neodymium magnets with at least 300 to 500 pounds of pull pressure. In fact, it would be prudent to go higher so long as you take care in handling the construction of the device. Now allow me to explain how this would work. If you were only shielding one magnet, it would constantly pull against the shielding material, making it difficult to open and shut. But by placing one magnet on both sides and equalizing out the field, it balances out. It's balanced by the fact that the magnets are always attracting the same amount of shielding material. If the magnet on one side is completely open, it's completely blocked on the other side. If it's blocked at one quarter on one side, it's open at one quarter on the other side. If it's open halfway on one side, it's open halfway on the other. You get the idea. Here's a simple example of how you can use a magnet to induce the rotation of a rotor and shield the steel bars on the rotor after they pass the magnet. This demonstrates the principle I've implied in my design. One way to configure this is to use spring-loaded levers on each of the rotors using exact placement to slide the shielding open and shut on the stators. Timing needs to be precise so that the shielding closes off the magnetic field right as the strongest level of attraction on the rotor reaches the magnet on the stator. This also would keep the momentum going to continue the rotational process from rotor to rotor. The concept is quite simple, though there will be a level of precision required to tool it properly. The real key to this is the shielding material and the bearing that connects it to the frame that secures the magnets. 
If the bearing is of extreme low friction and the magnets are lined up properly with the shield, then you should be able to turn it with little pressure back and forth. Once you have the stator built this way, and it moves freely and easily back and forth, you've already won the battle. The rotors are simple. They could be lightweight plexiglass with drilled holes to place the metal rods, or aluminum rods built from the bearing with metal rods or even L-shaped metal pieces at the end. There are literally hundreds of ways that you could alter this design to make it smoother, more refined, and efficient. I'm just supplying the basic building blocks. So there you have it. This is one of the simplest methods for how I believe you could build a working magnetic motor. Thanks for watching, and do great things.